So after rolling stub truck in the last video, it's in kind of rough shape. We lost our windshield and the stack's all bent and pointing right into the windshield. So that's making for some oxygen issues as far as driver comfort goes. So if this truck's gonna be the new tow pig of the channel, we're gonna have to modify it a little bit to make it a little more drivable. So let's get rid of the stack. And then I've got this guy, we'll slap him on. And that will direct the exhaust over the cab. And now she'll be golden. Nothing, why won't you go get you a dollar or something? Don't hang with a who line for nothing. I see that we different, you ride and I double my don't do discussions on bragging about hundreds. Don't go to your places, I know that they sunk in. Don't call me your brother, I barely could trust you. I talk to a shorty, she bagging the bucket. And I'ma need all of my dollars on coping, so hand me the money, I did be the pot. I'ma get the girl Alrighty, everybody, it is time to end an era. This is what's left of my very first truck, my first truck, my beloved truck. This is what has become because we have decimated it over the YouTube channel. Because this was the foundation of this channel. The first video I made, we put gasoline in it and ran gas through the engine. Then people didn't believe that I ran gas through it. So we took pure gasoline and dumped it down the intake and it ran away and hydro locked two cylinders and blew out the head gaskets on two cylinders, but it kept on running. Now, once the head gaskets were gone, it wouldn't hold coolant anymore. So then we were just running it without a radiator. And from there, we towed heavy weight with it. We took it to the dunes on paddle tires and ran it out at the dunes until it overheated. Ah, uh, we also choked it up with a giant DPF stack. We bolted 5,000 pounds of giant army truck tires on the rear axle and snapped the frame in half. And then, after that frame was snapped in half, I pulled the cab off, welded the axle where the frame snapped, and now we are where we're at today. Now I think the best way to send it off in full-fledged glory is to jump it. Uh, the biggest jump we can find, full throttle, full nitrous, and here's how I plan to do that, because if I'm on it, I'll die. So I don't want to die, so I'm not going to be on it when it jumps. So I have it set up to where it's slightly autonomous, and I'll explain why. We got our steering here. If I pull back on this, it flexes against the spring and I'm able to steer, but I have this little indentation so it'll latch into there and lock in dead straight. So I'm going to start on this, get it up to speed. There's no clutch control, so I'm just going to have it in first gear, crank it over, get it running. Here's my throttle, just pull on the throttle, shift to second gear, get back on the throttle, hook the throttle full wide open on this bolt. I'm still steering, steering, get it lined up as good as I can on this jump, lock it straight, grab this, jump off to my brown truck that Aaron's going to be driving. So hopefully this will go at about like 25 miles per hour. I'm going to leap through the air. And when I do that, I'm going to be wearing this lanyard that when I pull, this completes the circuit, which opens my nitrous solenoid. So when I pull this, you hear the little nitrous click. I can also control it with a red button. So that'll control nitrous as well. So right as I jump, it goes full nitrous. It's already going full throttle and it rockets off. Hopefully hits this jump where I'm aiming. Now we are gonna also throw the paddle tires on the back too. So that's gonna grip the sand and accelerate it to as fast as the engine can propel it. And then because this engine never dies, no matter what we do to it, it's probably gonna survive a jump somehow, some way. And if it lands, it keeps going, it's just gonna drive off on its own and we rely on it to overheat and lock up. And that's kind of the only way we have to stop it if it survives the landing. So that's the grand plan of today. Another little feature we have of it. So I've taken these fan blades, they're nice and metal, and I've sharpened them to a very sharp edge. So we're gonna throw some stuff into the blades. 
I got you guys some gifts. Santa. Santa's here. You guys like my sleigh? Yeah. Actually, Bespoke Post got us some gifts because they're the sponsor of today's video. You get the Explorer box. Awesome. Aaron, you got the Forge box. And for myself, I've got the Concentrate box because I love cold brew coffee. What did you guys get? The Damascus steel forged nice, knife. Nice leather sheath. There we go. It's a sweet looking knife there. Connolly, what do you got? Here. Nomad packable backpack, survival LED headlamp, toasted coconut and vanilla bean granola bar. And oh, can't forget the water bottle. Water bottle. Are we getting into it, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I couldn't resist. Here's how it works. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and every month they introduce their members to cool new products with a wide variety of interests that'll be narrowed down to your liking based on a preference quiz you'll fill out when you're signing up. Each box of Awesome has around $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of the price. 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. Now you only pay for what you want. You'll get a box of Awesome assigned to you each month and before it shift, you'll get to preview what comes inside the box and decide if one, you want to keep it, two, swap it for a different box on offer, or three, skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. So you only pay for what you want. Plus the box lineup changes every month, and with the holidays coming up, a great option is that you can go to the Bespoke Post Shop tab and shop for individual products for gift ideas for your friends and family. Now to get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description, or enter Hunter20 at checkout, or go to bespokepost.com slash Hunter20. Hey, you guys want some lunch? Yeah! yeah! I brought salad. You want salad? No! Well, oh, you're getting salad! One blade took a beating, but everything else sliced nice and clean. All right, I think it's about time we jump this thing. I've been waiting for so long to do this. Let's jump this thing. All righty, the way out for all the cameras. You'll have me under the truck. Aaron's gonna drive the brown truck. He's gonna hopefully pick me up and not kill me. As far as all of you guys, nobody can be behind the hill. Everybody needs to be like on the crest and off the side and in the front of the hill or like you just have to like have a good vantage point from where you could see the truck coming because I don't know how accurate my aim's gonna be with hitting this jump. And then we'll have two drone pilots. Connor, you're gonna drive the four-wheeler. Connolly, you're going right on the back of the four-wheeler. If the truck happens to land and survive and keep driving off, it's up to you guys to go chase it on the four-wheeler and keep filming it. <laughs> and then the drone pilots, you'll try to follow it with the drone. Sound good? Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to join in and give us a little play-by-play -play action because everything after this point just does not go to plan at all. So, right here, I hit full throttle. 
As you can see, Aaron is uh, struggling to keep up with my speed and get the bed oriented in a way that I can jump into the bed. So I'm left with trying to jump just to the driver door and luckily my foot does catch the running board and I'm able to maintain a grip. Although when I do this, my force of the kick fishtails the back end out. So now the half truck slams into the brown truck, pinching my legs and whatnot. And um, I'm thinking that may have damaged the steering slightly because from this point on, it wants to do this right hand turn. It's this nice slow right arc. So here's this other drone view, full throttle, make the jump, pen between the two trucks. And now it just starts on this right arc. <laughs> starts heading towards these kids, which were supposed to be way out of the way, but because of this new trajectory it took, they get right in the line of sight of this truck. I was thinking I was about to owe them some new dirt bikes, but it clears all of them. Then it just loops over to this bumpy area and gets thrashed quite a bit over here, to which it then comes to stop because the, that wood platform I had on it disintegrated and the battery was mounted to that. And so once the battery got ripped off the truck, the fuel solenoid shut off and the engine came to a stop. Which is good news because the engine does actually still run perfectly fine. So here we are getting to the scene. I'm kind of just trying to figure out what the heck just happened. And yeah. So the, uh, the half truck is mildly damaged. Like one of the coil springs popped out up front. And um, the rear axle, some of the welds cracked. So it's uh, not on there very good anymore just because of how much the frame was flexing. Um, so I'm going to rebuild it, get it up and going again. And I think I have a new idea of how I'm going to control this. That's going to be a lot more accurate and a lot safer where I don't have to attempt to jump into a moving truck and rely on somebody else to drive this truck and have to do that risk. So hopefully in the next coming days, I'll be able to uh, do the modifications necessary and uh, we'll be back here. We'll head back out to Mexico and try to film this again. So here you can see we got a stub truck involved to do the recovery. We retreated to a nice sunset. I ended up deciding to pick up some speed because I see a nice bump coming. So I start aiming for that so that at least this truck can hit some sort of jump today. And then we. And then we just bring it on home, bring it on back to the trailer, and we're able to get it back on the trailer from that point. So, so we certainly learned a lot from this day, and I definitely had super high hopes and high expectations seeing this thing soaring through the air that I'm definitely hooked and definitely determined to still make it happen. So, it's probably going to be an upcoming video that you guys can look forward to after I make the modifications that will allow me to control this truck in a much better manner. Also, it's probably worth addressing for you all that are probably mad at me for destroying such a pristine truck. But I, I will tell you that the cab is still in perfect condition and I have kept hold of that. And I do have a donor truck that I'm going to put this body on. So it's going to get a more modern frame, engine, more power, more capabilities. And I'm definitely going to breathe some fresh life into this truck and make it better than it's ever been before. So that'll happen sometime in the future. And then beyond that, I'll go ahead and tag that stove truck video I referenced in the beginning of the video for those of you that haven't seen it and may be interested in seeing us thrash it at the dunes and, and also flip it over. But other than that, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.